Hey everybody, you see the title of this? And we're gonna get straight into it. Can Kemba Nelson lower the 60 meter NCAA record again? Remember, she's the record holder right now. I'm gonna get into exactly what uh, those details are. But first, don't forget that we're gonna be covering other athletes. Here are some of the athletes that we're gonna cover on this channel. Do you know who this is right here? Do you know who she is? Well, if you don't, this is Cherokee Young. She's going into her junior year this year, and she's uh, really known for her 400. She made the uh, Jamaican team in the 400-meter 4x4 uh, relay for that relay pool, if you don't recall that. And so she was in her sophomore year at Texas A&M. So that means she's coming back in her junior year, more experience down her belt. And if it's not already created here, I'm going to have that, and it's going to be in the end card on the upper right-hand corner. So if you see an exclamation point, it's going to be videos about her and the other few athletes that I'm going to cover here. Here's another athlete I'm covering. Let's not forget T.T. Terry. We're going to be doing a video on her pretty soon, so check her out. Like I said, same thing with the end card here, and we're going to be covering Campria Sturgis. All right, she shocked everybody here. Uh, in that uh, 100 or this she shocked a lot of people because she had dropped even with the, the slightly illegal wind uh, I did look up the calculations about exactly how much you get wind assisted uh, marks because there's so many numbers thrown around I got it with a comprehensive study we're gonna look into that on how much of a PR she got if it was equalized for zero for both of her performances we're gonna do that in uh, a future video and here's the final person we're gonna cover pretty soon is Tori Bowie we're going to be covering her, where she is this season, what's going on, uh, where she may look uh, to be going after this. So stay tuned. Without further ado, we get into today's topic. Don't forget that this video is sponsored by viewers like you. Head over to the Patreon to support the channel. The links for everything about supporting the channel are in the description. It's sponsored by the Patreon. Here you go for that. And for Cash App, Chime Sign, and PayPal donations, I appreciate each and every one of you. Let's go in the topic. So when it comes down to uh, Kimba Nilsson, we're going to be facing two topics today. One is can she break the NCAA 60 meter record again and lower her own record? And then two, the underlying thing, can she break seven seconds in the 60 this season? Remember, she was a red shirt uh, junior this last season. So she has an extra season that she can come along here. Now, uh, to my knowledge, is that only counted for outdoor or indoor? Because I know, I think those are counted for two different sports. Now, that's the question mark. If she's not able to run the indoor season, then that's just out of the question. But this is assuming that she can because she was injured uh, during her 2020, 2020 season, which also was during the lockdown. And then she transferred to University of Oregon from Jamaica. All right. So she was in the Jamaican collegiate system. She said she wanted more competition. So she went over and she said, I'm going to NCAA's University of Oregon uh, captured her. And that's what we see her in this last season. So can Kimba Nelson do this? We're going to go through details about what her progression is and everything. So let's bring her up here. Take this off of the screen. And take a look at this. So, as far as her uh, progression, let's look at the indoor mark. So, she's done a 7.05. So, it says the 2020-2021 season. Obviously, because indoor starts in December for the collegiate schools. So, that's going to be coming up pretty soon. It's only a few months away. That's a 7.05. Do you know when she did this? Uh, obviously, she won and set the NCAA uh, championship and the collegiate record overall when she ran this mark that was the second fastest in the world at that time uh in this this year actually because it was set this year that was the second fastest in the world at that time when she ran that mark right and obviously she's uh better over the one in the 60s than she is over a 200 so that's where her strength lies she's a quick starter uh you can see how she's done that she was injured uh, back in 2020, which resulted in her transferring. Let's look at the results here, right? So she really was mostly undefeated. She took one loss. 
uh, the week before or two weeks before the uh, NCAA Indoor Championships at this meet here where she ran that 727, right? Then in the uh, the prelims, that's nothing to really worry about. Remember, T.T. Terry was still the favorite. She was the champion back in 2019. And she was coming in as a favorite because she ran a new PR as well, which was 7.09. Now, she came in and she shocked many people. She came in and she shocked many people except for a high school coach. She, the high school coach said, no matter where she's at, she's coming out there to win, right? She's coming out there to win. Let's put her up on the screen. Uh, Nelson came out there to win. Now, this is her. Uh, that was the interview after she had set the collegiate record. She said it actually surprised her. She said she was surprised at the uh, time that she ran and what she achieved there. Now, looking back in hindsight and looking at her races in the 100, she's a quick starter. So if she can perfect getting slightly faster, I think one, the answer is yes. She can break the 60 meter record. Let's look on the all times list right here about what those marks were. So here we are about the champions and everything like that. The, uh, Brookins, Lakea Brookins, used to have that from South Carolina back in 2011, 7.09, right? Then here, Aaliyah Hobbs of LSU. Now, you know she's a, a professional athlete. They kind of shafted her in the 100. It was, I, I thought that was really bogus uh, on behalf of, especially USATF, letting her in at the last moment. No warm-up on, on the 100-meter final. That was just a slap in the face. But Aaliyah Hobbs was the previous record holder with a 7 07. She knocked this down by two one hundredths of a second uh, this year and defeated the, the then defending champion of Twanisha Terry by running a 7.05. I think looking at this and looking at what she uh, has done in her 100, let's look at the 100. Okay, looking at what she's done on the 100 and where her consistency lies, she's broken obviously this was a wind assisted 10.90 but she's broken 11 seconds right here she's right she's run right around 11 low to 11 seconds pretty consistently right after that so we know that she has that mark if she can come in this season remain injury free i think that 7.05 is going down now the next question which is another tall feat is to break seven seconds is to break seven seconds. Can she do that? Let's look at all of her personal best, right? She was running against the headwind here in 2019. Her, uh, where is that? At the 60 meters, as it shows here, 7.05. Interestingly enough, I think her 200 uh, from outdoor, the transition, I think she can improve more upon that, but that's a different topic. And I'm not talking about her 100 outdoor here. Because what winded up happening here, let's bring this up on the screen, uh, where Kimba Nilsson, she was running against T.T. Terry and Tamara Clark and Cambria Sturgis really surprised a lot of people. Even looking at this mark, that was a huge drop in her time, even with the wind assisted everything, right? And so it was a surprise that she was out of the top three. In my opinion, it was a very big surprise that she was out of the top three. She was facing pressure. Maybe some of the pressure got to her. Remember, she was also on that four by one. She could not get the baton to her teammate. And then so they got DQ'd on that uh, on that baton exchange. I think it was Jasmine Reed that she was trying to pass the baton to. But unfortunately, she couldn't get to her. They finished, but then they got DQ'd later on. So she's going to have some work for her when it comes to the 100. That's why I'm sticking to the 60 because that's sooner. Once I'm able to see the indoor season, we can start talking about the outdoor with her because she's uh, a great, great 60 meter sprinter and a 100 meter sprinter. But that surprise last year kind of really uh, took people off guard. So my overall answer right here is that I think it's going to be very, very difficult to break seven seconds. I peg her at from looking at her performances in the 100, looking at her performances at the 60 from what she's done before. I think she can run somewhere around 7.02 to 7.03 is where I got her at. What do you guys think about that? Do you think she can run fast? If she runs a 7.01 or faster, I really think uh, now this is based on right now. If I start seeing her when the collegiate season starts and there's some other evidence about what's going on, 
okay, that's a that's a different whole other thing. But based on the progression I could more or less predict from her, seeing how the coaches have handled their athletes before at University of Oregon and seeing that the coaches that are there, I think that that's where she could run. If she runs faster than that, she is overperforming. And that actually wouldn't be a bad thing because if she can overperform in this uh, 60 meter indoor, the faster she is indoor, this is going to help her in her 100 when she comes outdoor, right? If she can get a quick start, if she can break seven seconds, she's going to be hard to beat, even if she's dying out toward the end. That'll give her a leg up, maybe even over uh, Brianna Williams. But that's another topic. We might actually have a Kimba Nelson versus Brianna Williams video. Do you guys want me to do that? Let me know in the comment section below. Let me know if you agree or disagree with my uh, times that I got to peg that and that she will with that she has a chance of lowering that 7.05. And remember, the 60 meter, If it that's that's your flat out speed. If it's anything about you make a mess up, you slip out of the blocks or anything, the race is over. There is no recovery. There's a chance in the uh, the 100, but it's really, really, really difficult in the 200 and uh, uh, not sorry, in the 60 meter, right? So let me know what you guys think. If you agree or disagree, I'm going to be covering these other videos. Like I said, they're going to be at the end of the video right here or on the end card where the exclamation point is if I have them recorded. But if you're seeing this on the day of at, uh, that I recorded this in September of 2021, then I probably don't have those videos yet. Catch you all on the next one. You've been watching Head & Shoulders ATR, where we cover athletes, performances, and otherwise that are head and shoulders above the rest. Peace.